Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of O'Reilly Media's Velocity Conference. We're here for two days in Santa Clara, California, talking about web performance, web testing. Uh, all the super alpha geeks are here, trying to make the web go faster. Tom Lunabus is here. He's the president and CEO of Soesta. Tom, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Good to see you, good to meet you. So, yeah, was, this is uh, quite a, a conference, you know, some serious uh, practitioners here. Very much. Uh, you know, not a lot of hand waving going yeah. on, not a lot of chest thumping and, and vendor marketing messages. You know, I like that. It's a, it's a different vibe, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sysadmin conference. So you're getting people that fix problems, and they're usually behind the scenes and they're not in the forefront, and uh, so you don't hear a lot of hype you hear a lot of discussion about technically how do you fix things, and uh, it's a good conference. Yeah, not a lot of suits. I don't even know if they know what this <laughs> is. <It's>, uh, <laughs> I know, I dressed up for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for that. So tell us a little bit about your, your company. Um, you guys are at the heart of this, uh, this web performance testing world. Right. Tell us about that. Well, you know, 10 years ago we started looking at uh, web performance and uh, mobile performance at the early days, and there's quite a lot of differences between uh, a web application, a website, or an, a mobile app than it was to the previous generation, client server. The biggest one is the most obvious, scale, globally, uh, locally. But it's also around agility uh, and, and such, your ability to move very quickly, your ability to develop very quickly. Uh, and performance, uh, you know, doing testing is what we do. Uh, we're known for quality as a service. You know, everybody has to be as a service. And the previous generation player was Mercury Load Runner and Mercury QTP. So Mercury Interactive was the dominant testing company and had been dominant since 1987. And, and we acquired by HP. Right? For four and a half billion. Yeah. Uh, big, big market. And we saw uh, those tools being a bit antiquated just 10 years ago and, and certainly now for this new generation of new types of applications and users and consumers. And so our approach to this was to find uh, more automation, uh, more scale and more affordability associated to testing these web applications and, and mobile apps, and we introduced, literally on this day, five years ago, uh, at the Structure Conference, the first cloud conference ever held, we introduced a product called Cloud Test. And what Cloud Test was, was the first enterprise cloud service ever provided, or pushed out there, and it allowed customers to simulate millions of users buying uh, tickets to uh, the London Olympics, as an example, or buying an iPhone from uh, Verizon or AT&T or downloading a song, and before that, it would literally take four to six weeks to set up a test. You might be able to simulate three or four hundred customers doing that, and so you really didn't have the representative view. So our view was to become the next generation Mercury Interactive for this new generation of mobile and website, and from that day, Sosta's taken off. It's been named by the Wall Street Journal, one of the top VC-backed companies in America for three years in a row. Uh, we have over 450 enterprise customers around the world. We tested the London Olympics. We're testing the Russian Olympics right now. Uh, and all the major events, even NASA landing the uh, Curiosity rover on, uh, on Mars last year, we tested their website for them. So uh, it's been quite the ride. Awesome, yeah, well yeah, you mentioned uh, you know, the client server days. It was lots, of, lots has changed since then, right? I mean, yep. so you really, you had a fat client and uh, a lot of horsepower there and you put a lot of attention on the server. Right. Uh, and also functional testing used to be very manual. Absolutely. So you mentioned automation. Talk about what's changed you know, since those days. Oh boy, everything. We, we, well, you, we used to call client server distributed. Yeah. Uh, and now with cloud computing where you're literally uh, delivering your applications all around the world and you don't really necessarily have visibility is a big, big problem. But the number one problem in the industry right now is fragmentation. You know, trying to get an application in the mobile world to work as equally on an Android as it does on iOS or vice versa, or even browsers, different browsers. And what all of our customers are trying to do is find a seamless customer experience. And what they mean by that is they want that application to run as good on iOS or a smartphone or a tablet as they do on Android and in all these different devices. And it's very difficult. You just have to look at Facebook to understand how difficult mobile is. They are having a struggling time trying to get their application performance the way they want it to be, so. Yeah, for sure. Now you mentioned that you've been doing mobile for a, a, a decade. Yeah. Mobile a decade ago is a lot different than it <laughs> is now. Uh, so. Completely different world, yeah. So that's interesting, Big a lot time. of foresight. Uh, John Furrier is going to join us here in a moment. Uh, John, John Furrier, my co-host from Silicon Angle. Uh, so, but Tom, uh, uh, what, you know, mobile 10 years ago, I mean, you guys are pretty prescient looking at 
that that well, is a trend. Well, part of it was because what we were doing at the time 10 years ago. So we, we started our company really in 2008, uh, but Ken Gardner, my co-founder, and I started looking at this problem, mainly because I had the problem. I, w I had one of the first SaaS-based application companies in 2002. We had a company called Dorado that yeah. did loan origination for all the big banks, so I was the back end for Wachovia and uh, Chase Manhattan, a bu bunch of big banks. Well, acquisition, right? You guys got acquired. Exactly, yeah. and they were looking at mobile as well and say, what will we do when mobile comes down the road? And although it was years in advance, that conversation really had an impact to us because we began to see you know, when we were looking at client server, back in those days, there was probably only about 100,000 client server apps out there. Now there's almost a billion websites and apps. There's a million and a half mobile apps, uh, about 900,000 iOS apps and 500,000 plus of Android. I mean, it's a whole different landscape. And fragmentation is going to be the topic. It has been the topic for two years. It's going to continue to be. Well, we had Google on earlier, and they were, talk, we were talking about how every, every website you go to now says download our app, download yeah. our app, because they want to try to simulate that native performance and right. have control over that. Is that, is that, is that a Band-Aid, is that a short-term trend? Will that go away in your view, or is that no. sort of the norm? Uh, you know, the, thing, the trend lines we're seeing, Dave, is um, even worse. You know, where we talk about numbers of apps, that's really not the issue. Many people are building apps that will only be used for 72 hours. So we're getting to disposable dis apps. You got it. Oh disposable gosh. apps. And, and let me give you some examples of it. The, um, uh, the London Olympics. When you buy, you know, they they create an event to everybody come online to buy the million tickets available. Well, that literally sells out within you know a week. And right. so that's a one week app. Whenever uh, Apple introduces a new phone, every carrier in the world has a pre-order site, whether it's Verizon or AT and T. And they say, you can be the first to buy your, uh, the new iPhone 6, or whatever it may be, at 12 midnight on September the 13th. Well, they'll get 250,000 orders in 60 minutes. $100 million of revenue going through, but it's a site that'll only last 48 hours. So, not only is the trend line going to disposable, it's also putting more pressure on performance. Wow, so yeah, we heard uh, the gentleman from Obama for America today talk about how you know, some performance increase generated a 14% increase in conversion, which right. meant tens of millions of dollars. So you're talking about iPhone sales or smartphone sales, uh, we're talking about you know, more than tens of millions even. Well, there's an impact both positively and negatively, and I think that's, you know, one of the things that I think is fundamentally changing is we talk about users, all of us geeks, and all the people here really mm -hmm. talk about users. Well, there's a difference between consumers and users. Users, when a site goes down or is slow, are kind of, they're either employees or they're, they're going to stay on site and keep coming back. A consumer, if the site's slow, will go find another site that they can go buy that Nike shoe or download a new, phone, uh, a new um, uh, card or whatever it may be. So I think the big change here is this evolution from users to consumers and the behavior of consumers is not as easy to deal with for the tech community right now. Yeah, because users, uh, you know, the squeaky user you know, gets the oil kind of thing, but the, the squeaky consumer goes to another website. You guys do a lot in retail, don't you? Yeah, uh, 12 of the top 25 retailers use our technologies to test their both mobile apps and their websites. Uh, right now, this is the big season for retail because in the U.S. because uh, they're getting ready for holiday or seasonal readiness. So all the testing is done during the summertime because once uh, Halloween comes, yeah, uh, Halloween everything the code's got to get frozen. Right? It, it, you can't be it, making changes it, after Halloween. You start it's even that's pushing it. It's amazing. Yeah. It used to be Thanksgiving right. when I grew up, and uh, that all the sales would happen. But now it's really back to Halloween, so all the testing on most of the sites around the world are being done right now, so we're really, really busy. Pretty soon it's going to be Labor Day. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my colleague John, John Furrier has joined us, John. We're having a great discussion about uh, web performance and specifically performance testing. Um, What's your take on all this? Well, I'm sorry I'm late. I was just doing a tweet chat. You know, I love doing the tweet chats, <laughs> Dave, because <laughs> yeah. you know we we are experimenting with our own little tweet chat uh, client, but uh, uh, with NetApp. So shout out to NetApp uh, for that uh, great tweet chat I just did for an hour, talking about storage, infrastructure, and business apps. So obviously that's more enterprise. So uh, and Tom, great to to see you on the Cube in Good person. To see you too, talk John. a lot on Twitter. We have commentary going back and forth. You got that tongue in cheek. Uh, uh, Mojo on Twitter, which I like. <laughs> I get slammed for it on my end too, but. <laughs> so I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> some people don't get, Twitter's hard, you just have a tongue and a cheek, some sort of simple, like, you know, you know, you know trying to stir it up. But I gotta, I gotta ask you, yeah. um, 
you know, you have a lot of experience. You've seen all the, the moves by the vendors over the years. You've seen all the cycles of innovation. We're living in a kick, kick, kick butt cycle right now. A lot of innovation happening at the infrastructure apps. How's the enterprise is hot, smoking hot. Entrepreneurs are, are smoking on the consumer side. What you, what's your take on the market, with, with the vendors in particular? Because IBM, HP, EMC, we just talking about NetApp, these guys are like, they're slower than the startups. <laughs> and you're in the world of agile, you know, talking about automation, QA, cloud. You know, the app market's moving so fast. What's going on with the vendors in, in your mind? What, and, and, and how does it, how do they adapt to this new real world? Yeah, well, you guys know, I, I've been doing this for 35 years, and, and, and all that means is I'm old. Um, <laughs> uh, but it also says I, I've seen a lot you of- Used to be an advantage, Tom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. It's it, a hot we, thing, experience <laughs> matters now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're continuously young in the Silicon Valley. Uh, <laughs> but Never too old to do a startup. I, I, yeah, I totally yeah. big believer in it. But we have seen a lot of trends. I mean, I, I was back in the mainframe days and I saw client server evolution, then I saw the web point to, uh, 2 point and, and now really the advancements. I, you know, I think this is really a significant point though in inflection and, and I think every vendor likes to say that because it's, it's to their best interest. But the reality is for 35 years, or at least for the last 20 years, the application life cycle has been dominated by IBM, HP, Microsoft, you know, and what I mean by the application life cycle is dev, test, deploy, manage. Those are the four yeah. cornerstones. And, and provisioning was, has a different word back then. Now it's, oh, I mean, okay. you're provisioning hardware. I want to push code, I'm waiting for gear. I mean, you remember the days. So I well, got to set up an, an, uh, a connection, I got to get the port connected. Exactly. Uh, and then tested, I'm like, hey, I got my code. Well, on local host, I want to get it to the network. It led to the friction of <laughs> dev departments never talk to ops, ops never talk to test, and all those things. But I think right now, because of this new form of consumerism, and what's really changing here, getting away from tech for a second, is that you're seeing a transition of, a, right now it's a trillion dollars, that have gone from bricks and mortar storefronts to e-commerce. The suggestion is it's going to go to 10 trillion over the next five years. And there is a race to who is going to provide the platform yeah. for that transition. This is a fundamental shift going, and, and it's more powerful than a tech shift where, where we want to build a better mousetrap. This is driven by real revenue yeah. directly to consumers. I mean, you hit the nail on the head, and one thing that folks who, who've been following my blogging and tweeting it's going back a decade uh, is, I, 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 I love to talk about online advertising, and I'd love to talk about some of the, the infrastructure trends. Because they're kind of the same. I mean, online advertising just never happened. Even though it's still massive, offline advertising is still the bulk of the revenue. Right. So you're talking about e-commerce, it's the same paradigm. It's still so massively old school. It, it, and, it's, and it's just going to get faster with mobile. So that acceleration, I think, is going to pick up. And, and you know, advertising, as we know, with banner ads, I mean, granted, there's a lot of limitations, and you know, I feel that they just, in general, have no value at all. But when you start doing transactional things like sales, right. lead gen, right. buying I mean, stuff, that's, that's the new advertising, it's all digital. And I think all the vendors get that, because all the customers get that. And so, you know, I've never seen quite as much fear in the eyes of enterprise CIOs that I've seen in the last two years around this shift of the economy that's driven by mobile. So everybody's trying to figure out what <coughs> mobile platform they're going to use and how they're going to build and how they're going to test and how they're going to do it. So, you know, the, the young companies like my company are really adept um, to, to shift to those markets in, in significant ways. Uh, because we don't carry the luggage that the bigger guys have and the impact, and probably the biggest impact for the big companies to make this move isn't necessarily technological, it's things like comp plans. How do you get a sales force that's used to selling a $10 million product to sell $1,000 an hour or something product? And that's a big, big shift for so us. We so, just had, so we just had Patrick Lightbody on who's from New yeah, Relic no, and well. he writes the books on Java and, and whatnot. And we were talking about Agile. Right. Agile, big fan of Agile, you know, iterate, push code, the lean startup, the lean app. On the web, when something breaks, you just refresh your screen. Mobile's different. In mobile, you can't pull those, that genie out of the bottle. I mean, people who have the old iOS and the old Android don't have the auto updates. They don't have all that. The user experience, if something goes wrong, it's hard to pull those guys back in. So, you know, you're seeing kind of the shift towards old school pre-packaged QA and test. You got to get it right. You can't just launch mobile and say, oh, we'll fix it. I, I watched a great interview last night. Do you time. agree with that? Do you agree? Or what's your view on this? Well, I, you know, I think 
quality matters more today than it's ever mattered. When you go directly to the consumer, the consumer is three clicks away from a competitive environment, so the brand doesn't have control. For 100 years, retailers, uh, you know, focused on trying to get somebody off a couch, drive to a mall, even if the service is bad, they're not going to go somewhere else. In, in technology, when you go directly to the consumer, if the site doesn't work, you're done. Monitoring, as an example, has a real problem because while we talk a lot about monitoring around here and there's a whole APM market, by the time a pro you start seeing latency on a site, your customers are gone and they're not necessarily going to come back. And so that's the bigger problem. So quality as a service is actually becoming of quite the play within these communities. It used to be, I wrote a blog on this uh, about a year ago, it was agile at what cost? And if it's the yeah. cost is quality, then you're in big trouble. I think there's a lot consumer. of people that are trying to take agile and take shortcuts through QA and just, you know, oh, Mark Zuckerberg promotes this with his, oh, just go break stuff. I mean, come on, yeah. that means you can, this means you can push crappy code. I did you something know, really interesting you know. last night. I went to uh, uh, YouTube and I was watching some interviews, an old interview with Steve Jobs from 1990 when he was at Nix. And what he said in that interview, he said, you know, we now have to go to the enterprise. We have to be world class. And what the definition of world class is agile, although he used time to market back then, agile and quality. You, if you don't have those two things, you're not world class. And I think that's the definition that still stands here 23 years so later. So how, how do you size your opportunity? I mean, you know, you like to talk about TAM, but the thing, these things are so much in flux. How do you communicate that to investors, yeah. and, you know, even internally for yeah. strategic planning? Well, there's a couple different things. There's a lot of variables, and, and some of them are good, and some of them are, are more traditional and not the right way of doing it. I think the old school way is doing what I said earlier. You know, there's a billion websites. There's a million and a half mobile apps. That's the way we used to size. It's probably more relevant to say there's a trillion dollars of revenue coming through e-commerce, and it's going to go to 10 trillion, and so how do we preserve that? I think mm -hmm. the other side of it is to do the other traditional old school is, in my space alone, and uh, clearly I'm going after HP, sorry, John, but HP. Why are you saying uh, sorry to me? I don't, you know. You were at HP at one point. Yeah, um, I'm a fanboy, <laughs> but I've been critical of HP. They know that, I mean, I just wrote a post on their cloud That thing. was actually a very good post. <laughs> uh, um, but the, I don't think they were happy about that one. The Mercury, uh, the, the Mercury company, Mercury Interactive, was acquired for uh, or 4.5 billion in 2006. Rational bought, uh, IBM bought Rational for 2.2 billion. Testing's always been big, but at a much smaller set, meaning there was only 50,000 client server apps as an example. Now we have millions of apps that are generating trillions of dollars of revenue and the world's quite a bit different. So it, it's about, will somebody that's making a million dollars on a website spend $60,000 to make sure the user experience is a good user experience. That's really what well, it Well, yeah, they want to do that through, you know, sassification, and you're seeing it. I mean, I'm, you know, obviously Salesforce got it started, but you see what's happening with Workday, you see what's happening with ServiceNow, I mean, the, the sassification of virtually all businesses, and that's, it's hard for companies with, you know, legacy, on-premise software, a lot of baggage to, tr to make that transition. We, you know, we talk about this all the time. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's right. a tough, it, I think that's fundamentally the bigger uh, transition. It's not the technological shift, it's the business shift. Mm -hmm. and, and I've seen that because we partner with a lot of the big companies like IBM and others. And I think at the same time, uh, this is a whole different infrastructure and network that we're dealing with. And the fragmentation of mobile, technologically, this is a far more complex problem to deliver quality user experiences. So um, it's, you got to take both. You got to look at the SaaS biz business model, tough for the big guys to kind of come down. And then you've got to get them to a point where they fully understand and appreciate uh, the new infrastructure and network and, and these, all these mobile devices. And, and we're lucky, we're ahead of the curve and we've been leaders in this area, but you know, the big guys will come around. I mean, they're big guys for a reason. Tom, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Great to see you live in person. Great to also know you on Twitter. It's been a virtual conversation we've had many times. Yes. Um, so thanks for coming on theCUBE. And we're at the Velocity Conference. Hashtag is Velocity, C-O-N-F, conf, for short for conference, Velocity, C-O-N-F. Tweet us, we're going to respond to you. And got a lot of interaction, Dave, on, on, uh, on Twitter right now. We have uh, a lot of interesting statistics. And people are very interested, obviously this is JavaScript uh, uh, overlay from Fluent, but in general, a lot of interest in uh, uh, live sketching, um, SiliconANGLE, web performance, Wikibon, the Cube. we're all trending on there. Uh, mobile performance seems to be the hot thing right here. So we're going to continue to break it down for here inside the Cube. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We got the events. Extract the city from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>